Hey everybody, uh, Thrifty Teresa here, coming back with another question and answer video. I wanted to get the ball rolling again on this little Q&A series because I had so much fun doing it the other week. And I have been getting your questions and comments and I want to be able to address those to the best of my ability. So today's question comes from a YouTuber, Cherry Vintage. I love your username, first off. Uh, Cherry Vintage has uh, some questions about Etsy uh, because she's currently an eBay seller. She's been an eBay seller for quite some time from what I can tell. And um, I'm going to be honest, I took a look at your eBay store <laughs> and uh, I'm really surprised that you are not selling on Etsy. You have some amazing stuff on your Etsy shop or eBay shop <laughs> and if eBay is going really well for you that's awesome if it's something that you're used to now and you want to stick with it that's great but if you want to get more information about Etsy that's what I hope I can give you and it might be worth your while to practice on that platform um, make a little shop it doesn't take any money or, or monthly investment to create a shop on Etsy uh, the listings are extremely cheap it's only 20 cents per listing and that listing can stay on Etsy up to four months before you have to pay another 20 cent fee so keep that in mind <laughs> it's worth experimenting with Etsy um, but Cherry had some specific questions about Etsy and I wanted to try to address those questions. Uh, she asks, what sells well on Etsy? What sells fast? Now, I've only been a vintage Etsy seller for a few months. Um, for several years, I used to be a handmade seller. Um, but because her question is specifically geared towards vintage, what I can really tell you is only what has sold well for me, but that also is probably going to be different than what sells for you because we sell different things. Um, a lot of my sales on Etsy um, and a lot of the items that go into my Etsy shop are all in, not all, but a lot of them are in the genre of like 80s and early 90s pop culture, cartoons, um, things like that, because that's the stuff that I grew up with. So I have a lot of things that trigger my nostalgia uh, for my childhood. So lots of Smurfs and lots of Strawberry Shortcake and lots of uh, Snoopy and Peanuts, which of course have been around for years. Um, cartoons, pulp culture stuff. Um, I just sold uh, the other day a Beetlejuice lunchbox from the Beetlejuice cartoon that was in the 90s. Um, those are the types of things that I sell the most of. And the reason I think that I sell the most of those types of items is because a lot of the uh, people who use Etsy, either people who are also Etsy sellers that are browsing the site for fun things, or other people that are finding Etsy who like to shop online, I think a lot of them are probably within my age range. The Generation X, the Generation Ys, they, um, you know, love their television, they gotta have their MTV back when MTV used to play videos, and um, just all that stuff creates a lot of um, nostalgia for their childhood. At least it does for me. That's one of the reasons I buy that kind of stuff. It's one of the reasons my father buys that kind of stuff because he had nostalgia for his childhood so he started collecting things from my childhood. Um, it's just kind of crazy like that. But that's the stuff that's in my store that seems to sell the fastest. Um, but again, that's primarily the stuff that I purchase and the stuff that I post. Uh, now, if you had a store that was all vintage clothing or vintage accessories like jewelry or sunglasses or some of the awesome stuff that Cherry Vintage has in her eBay store, um, her mileage is going to vary. The other question that she had for me was, what sells slower yet sells consistently? So these would be the long tail items. And 
what I've found so far that sells slower but consistently is craft supplies, uh, sewing patterns, uh, miscellaneous bags of beads and buttons, things like that. Um, craft supplies are big on Etsy because Etsy was a primarily a handmade crafting community. So people purchase their supplies on Etsy and then take those supplies and make them into awesome creations to sell in their own shop. Um, so craft supplies are one. Sewing patterns is something else that I have listed a lot of in my shop. Uh, vintage sewing patterns, I generally don't Eh, a little bit. I sell some that are from the 90s and stuff. Sewing patterns don't have to be vintage to be on Etsy because they are considered a craft supply. So you are not bound by those vintage guidelines when it comes to uh, sewing patterns. So you can pick up a giant stash of them for a dollar or two at your local thrift store and put them up on Etsy. Now they may not sell right away, but they do sell, and I have sold a few. There are some Etsy shops that that is all they sell, is just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sewing patterns. Um, people use them. So it's something that I put in my shop to build my inventory, but it's not something that I have in my shop that is going to bring me a lot of money if I'm only selling them at five or six dollars a pop. Uh, the last question that Cherry had for me was, is it worth the time and investment to start selling on Etsy if you already have an eBay business? And I touched on that when I first started the video. Um, and I touched on that in the question that I had the other week from Chuck about he already has an eBay store and is it worth his while? I think yes. It's not going to hurt. <laughs> and Etsy has its positive, there's more positive in the column than there is negative. And I've talked about Etsy a lot, really encouraging people to try it out for two really big reasons. First reason is cost. It is cheaper to list on Etsy. You get cheaper final value fees and cheaper um, payment fees on Etsy than you do on eBay. Additionally, the other thing that I've really championed about Etsy is the higher quality of customer that you're going to get. I have never, in any of the years that I sold on Etsy, and I started selling on Etsy in 2007, I have never encountered a terrible customer. I have never encountered somebody who is trying to nickel and dime me, get my prices down, never encountered somebody who I felt was trying to scam me um, out of an item saying it was lost or anything like that. We've all heard the horror stories of some of the poor customer experiences that sellers have had on eBay. I have not encountered any of that on Etsy. So the quality of customer, I believe, is better on Etsy because they are either there because they're shopping for handmade items, but they happen to find a really great vintage treasure, or they're looking for a vintage treasure. And when they find it on Etsy, they know that it's going to be something of quality and they're willing to pay more. They're willing to pay more. Um, whenever I cross post something onto Etsy. For example, some of my father's items I've put in my Etsy store, he has them on eBay in his account, and then I've cross posted some of those into my Etsy store. I always charge more. I charge more because if I do a search and a little research on Etsy, if people are also selling similar items or even the same item that I have, um, it's usually more than the asking price on eBay. Um, the customer is simply willing to pay more. So I think it is in everybody's best interest if they like to sell vintage items on eBay. Um, and especially somebody with a vintage eye like Cherry Vintage who's asking these questions, who has a phenomenal store on eBay. I really think you need to give it a shot. What are you going to lose? 
All you got to do is a little bit of time, a little effort. You've already got the pictures of your items that you have on eBay. You already have listings created that you can copy and paste the descriptions. You can easily plug those into the Etsy platform. Get your shop started with 10 or 20 items and just see how it goes. So give it a shot. That's what I have to say. Uh, if anybody else out there has any questions about Etsy, eBay, or being a new seller on Amazon FBA, because I certainly hardly know anything about selling on Amazon FBA yet, very new at this. So if you're new too and you have questions, leave a comment below and I will try to answer those questions in a future video. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye.